Hello, we're hey. back. It's been a while. <laughs> we're back. We're back. All right, so now that we're here today, after a month and a half or whatever yeah, it's thanks been. thanks for coming back to see us. Yeah, so I don't, you know, I suppose I forget. So I'm Jennifer, hello. I am the CEO here at Platinum and this is Dora. Hello again. So, you know, we're here to answer all your questions as we try to do at least once a month for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so today we just want to talk about a couple of new things. Mm -hmm. So the first one that we just announced and just released on the website, we finally have our Fusion A ready. So we've, it, we've transitioned our previous retinol molecular mm -hmm. fluid into our Fusion A. So we still have some retinol left. That's clearanced out on the website. When that's gone, it's gone. We won't be making it anymore because this is way, way, way better. And, you know, if you haven't read the website, please read the Fusion page because it's been redone. There's a lot of information in there talking about the different retinoids in there. Mm -hmm. So as we know, you know, when you put retinol on, it has to convert into retinaldehyde and then the retinaldehyde has to convert again into basically tretinoin, like what your prescription is. Mm -hmm. So the higher up the chain you are, the better, the quicker, the stronger the product can be. So this product is mostly retinaldehyde, which is the very strongest retinoid available over the counter, and Granactive retinoid, which is the new kid on the block. And what's really cool about Granactive retinoid is that it does not need to convert at all. It is a true ester of tretinoin. So you put it on, it goes right to work. Starts working. So obviously we have the two biggies and then we also have some retinol in here. They all work amazingly together. It's in a little bit different base. It's in more of a, this is an even more deeply penetrating base because there's more water in this one. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be accepted by your skin a little bit easier. There's some DMI in there to push the ingredients even deeper. So yes, this is gonna be stronger. This is going to be a much, much better product. I absolutely love this. New and improved. So good, I'm so excited about this. Took a while, but here it is. So the question is, what percent should I choose that we keep getting? So <laughs> if we had the 10, 20, 30, 50, now we have, so you see it's very clearly different, 15, 25, 35, and 55. Yes. So 55 being the luminosity 55 version is luminosity. for your peel boosters and such. If yes. You so now these, the these little guys are now filled with the new luminosity. What you'll see is like, I know it's people are going to think it's a cream. It's not really a cream. It's more of a um, creamy serum. Let's call it that. It's a creamy serum. So it can still go on with your serums. Mm -hmm. You can put other thinner serums on first if you like, and then this serum, and then your creams, and then your oils. So when you're choosing percentages, if you've never used retinoids before, start with the 0.15. For sure. If you've been using retinoids or retinols for a long time and you feel like your skin isn't sensitive at all, yeah. you could use the 0.25. Uh, if you've been using Retin-A in the low prescriptions, like mm -hmm. the 0 0.025, 0 0.05, you can use the 0.35. And if you've been using like 0.1 tretinoin and you're trying to get off that, you want something over the counter, you could use the 0.55 luminosity. And just so you know, it is, it can be a little bit more drying. Yes. So where I've changed the directions on the side of this, it no longer says to just apply this every single night. It says to start off applying it two to three times a week and then work your way up. Yeah. Okay. Cause it can cause dryness. I've been mixing mine with my moisturizer at night. I do this because I'm thing. a little retinol sensitive, so I've been doing the 15. I've been doing every other night, adding a pump to my nighttime, you know, yep. regimen. And yep. yeah, I haven't had any issues, no sensitivity. Everything is good. When I used the point 25 every single night for like four days in a yeah. row, I was so dry; it mm. was unbearable. I had to stop for a couple of days, and then. But if I'm mixing it with other things, add Regenerate in or add my vitamin B in, I'm good. Right. And then. I just wanted to show you, we've talked about the essential effects that we are coming up with. This is the Bacuchiel, an essential oil anti-aging product. So we have our packaging, we have the product, we're just waiting on, well, here's one bottle. That's a sample bottle. We're waiting on the bottles. Once we get the bottles, we will have this product out to you. And so Bacuchiel 
This can be used for people that actually have really big retinoid sensitivities, but mm -hmm. you still want retinol-like results then this is gonna be the next one that we recommend to you. Hopefully soon, soon, soon. Very soon. Very soon. All right, <laughs> and okay. off with that, I'll let's get on to the questions. The okay, so now let's start. Our first question comes from Amelia. Um, she says, hi there, I don't currently have a platinum cleanser to use. Could you recommend a CeraVe or Cetaphil cleanser that would be okay to use pre-peel? Previously, when I received office peels, I was told to apply a gentle cleanser, CeraVe hydrating cleanser or something gentle a week prior to my peel. Outside of that time, I use a prescribed cleanser by my dermatologist. It's a sulfur cleanser. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, and she then... <laughs> has a lot of wording here. So basically, she's wanting to know what cleanser should she use before her peel. Um, She's under the assumption that it's best to use something without any acids. No, and, and that, I'm going to go against that because I feel very strongly that you need to prepare your skin and get mm -hmm. rid of as much dead yeah. skin as you possibly can, even out that skin before you do a peel. You're right. going to get better results. You always want to prep your skin first, and you do that by using something like an acid-based cleanser or an acid-based serum or retinoids. And since you're using sulfur cleansers, I'm gonna mm -hmm. assume you have acne, so I'm gonna suggest you use our AB cleanser. And no, you don't have to stop it immediately prior or a week prior. You can just use this all the time. So use your, I would use your sulfur cleanser at night, use this during the day. Mm -hmm. And then after your peel, if for some reason you feel sensitive, then go ahead and use that really mild over-the-counter peel, or over-the-counter um, cleanser. But yeah. I would add the AB cleanser into your regimen. All right, sounds good. All right, so Tracy um, asks, in what order do I apply the products for best results? I have purchased Retinol, Point 30, Emu Oil, Super Cop, and the Fade Bright. All right, so Fade Bright is always first. Definitely. You know, because it's, I know I have one here. Here it is, because it's alcohol-based. So just think of it like cleanser toner. Toners are usually alcohol-based. Yeah. Toners always go on first. Fade Bright is always first. That's is your thinnest one. And then you've got, the retinol, which would go on next, that's your serum. Mm -hmm. And the then, oil. well, or... She could mix the two, retinol and emu, as well, if she chooses. She could. Well, well, so, or, if you're putting super crop on at the same time, though, then you do your cream, and mm -hmm. then you follow it with your oils. Right. But, you know, if you're not using the super crop, then during the day, you know, well, I don't know what you're going to put on. She well, you're going to put your... treating with the 2X. I don't know. It doesn't really say. Yeah. Yeah. It's not normally something you're going to put all over your face. You're Correct. just going to just like dab it into little spots. Yes. So I would put that on before the emo oil because emo can help to push things deeper into the skin. So that's a benefit. Perfect. Um, okay. Next question comes from Rosalie. She says, hello. Hi. Can you tell me what peel I could buy from you for my melasma? Fine lines, wrinkles. Please, I want to buy soon. Thank you, Rosie from New York City. Well, I mean, there's a couple, of course. For melasma, mm -hmm. we can do Mandelic, Lactic, or Jesner. Right. So if you want something really, really gentle and you want to see no flaking at all, go with Lactic 50. If you want to get a little bit of dryness and flaking, do the Mandelic 40. If you're like gung-ho and you want a lot of flaking, go with the Jesner. Just start with like, you know, two layers maybe and work yeah. up over the coming months. But those are gonna be your your biggest ones. And then obviously use things like Fade Bright, use things like, you know, uh, Fusion A, start with the point fifteen. Use Vitamin those C. things every Vitamin day. Vitamin C is always Vitamin really good. Vitamin C, Sunblock, oh, all yeah. of those. Write all that down. <laughs> you don't have to. This will all be posted. <laughs> all great advice. <laughs> Okay, the next question comes from Jules. She says, I have good skin overall, except scarring on my chin from cystic acne, which flares up with no warning. So I've been using Retin-A for 30 years, which helps somewhat, and I have been, and has been preventing wrinkles with sunscreen since I was in my 20s. I have a red light mask that I use regularly and micro needle every month or so. Um, I have done the Mandelic peel, and my big question is, can I do the Mandelic peel if my skin can take it with in conjunction with all these other procedures? You just need to rotate things. Yeah. You know, if you're doing needling, 
you do your needling for, you know, yeah. one week, two weeks. I don't know how deep your needles are. I don't know how long you have to wait. On average, I try to do like one thing a month. Right. You know, needling or microdermabrasion or chemical peels or whatever you're doing. You have to, and it's not even that your skin doesn't heal, but once the surface is done healing, now you've got underneath that's doing all of that yeah. good regenerating and you don't want to stress your skin again before right. all of that's done. That's why you need to wait the time. So, and then I really wanted to suggest regenerate mm -hmm. if you're dealing with cystic acne. For sure. That is so, 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 so helpful. If you have some, dab it on a couple times a day, that will get rid of it in a as couple of days. As soon as you feel that cystic acne coming on. Yeah. As soon as you feel it. Dab it on and then start using it every day and then yeah. you won't get that. Yeah. And then real. for the scars, I, I grabbed the Super Crop 2X here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have the depressed scars. If you do, you can do the TCA cross. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can even just start with the Super Cop 2X every day. Those are all super helpful. Okay. Uh, next question comes from Karen. She says, thank you for your preparation video. I purchased the glycolic acid as my first peel, and I wanted to ask if you can apply the peel around the eye area. Well, I mean, obviously you're going to get up to about the orbital bone, mm -hmm. no matter what peel you're doing. If you if you want to put peels closer under the eye, or, you know, for crow's feet mm -hmm. and upper lids, I would suggest not really doing these milder peels and I will go right to TCA because TCA is stronger. It's yeah. gonna help to stimulate more collagen and elastin. And we even have a, a kit for this, which is the 7% TCA yes. and the luminosity and the Cintis, no, <clears throat> it's the Matrixyl. Matrixyl's in the eye. For yes. the eye kit that's going to help much better. Leave the glycolic for your face and then get the TCA for the eyes. Okay, next question from Christine. I had an IPL treatment and now have some hyperpigmentation patches. Can you recommend how to best treat these patches and the whole face to balance the color again? My skin type is five. So she so has a dark um, Fitzpatrick. Yep. And, and it's, it's a little dangerous to do yeah. the lasers on darker skin and they know that. And I hope that they pre told you to pre-treat yeah. with something like they probably would say hydroquinone yep. or a prescription Retin-A or retinoids or something just because using those helps to turn down the likeliness, you know, it turns down the melanin production in your skin. So when they're hitting you with that high powerful laser creating yeah. all that that's because they're all about heat in the skin yeah, it's and heat. heat is what causes pigmentation that's Ooh, why it's, it's so dangerous with the darker skin it's types. a flash <laughs> yeah yes it is i've had it done <laughs> for me as well and it's a little shocking when, yes it is yeah. it's like ow 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 yeah, yeah. it's awful but fun? yeah use things like fade bright use things like fusion a so i would get like you know the point 15 Put this on every night, put the favorite on twice a day, your SPF 50, you may need to do a peel. I'm not saying to do a dark, a, a deep peel, I'm saying to do something mild because we don't want to aggravate it further, maybe like a Mandelic 40 mm -hmm. or maybe a Lactic 50, something very gentle right. to try to ease that back and sun, oh, lots and lots of sunblock and keep applying it. Okay, Daniela says, I'm Fitzpatrick type five, so also dark Same. skin. She has some moderate photo aging. Um, she says she's been using prescription tretinoin for 15 years to keep her adult acne in check. I have hyperpigmentation and fine lines on my forehead. I wanted to start slow, so I purchased Mandelic 22 and Lactic 50. I need something stronger, but I don't want to waste my product. Can I layer these products for a stronger effect? Another thing is I have the TCA7. I purchased it six years ago. I opened it but never used it. I know products tend to last one year once opened, but can I use this or should I toss it? That one you're gonna wanna toss. Yeah. So peels are that good. One's go. Two years unopened yeah. and up to one year once they're opened. Mm -hmm. So that's no good. Now, you, you don't ever have to waste your Mandelic uh, 22 or your Lactic 50 mm -hmm. because even if you did turn around and buy, let's say you bought the Jesners and you do that once a month for a couple months, you don't always wanna be doing those deep peels. Yes, the next thing you know it, you're like, oh, I wanna do a peel, but I don't want all that flaking. Then you can pull out your Mandelic or your Lactic and start doing a weekly peel. and it's not gonna cause a lot of dryness or flaking, either of them, so you can leave them on a longer time frame if you want more. I don't suggest layering them, that's not gonna do anything. Yeah, no. Not with those two acids. Um, but leave it on a longer time, 15 minutes, 20, 30, 45, an yeah, hour. Right. People will leave that on, just work your way up. For sure. Um, yeah, you'll be able to use it all, it's fine. I bet you this is our pickup. Dora has to go 
use the high low possibly i wear many hats possibly. here we've had a truck schedule that was supposed to come this morning and we of knew course they're hours late so we'll see they'll we'll see her. they'll yell for me she's our driver <laughs> is she yelling go for me? check is she yell is she yelling for dora all right let's go to the next question okay. and then we'll, i'll answer it. uh from watching your videos i've learned that tca peels help build collagen and elastin do other peels do this too or is it the only or is it only tca all peels are You're good. Oh, oh, good. Good. all right Yay. good all peels help all acids help you know a lot of things help to build collagen yeah. and elastin but yeah tca is the king mm -hmm. you know that that is the one that you want to use like why, you know, if you're going to use these other acids, use them in your daily products, use them in your cleansers and leave on serums and things. If you're ready to do a peel and you're trying to get collagen and elastin and glycosaminoglycans, which is like the moisture, that's TCA. I would highly suggest just, just make sure you just do a handful of TCA peels a year, do three or four a year. That's all you need to do. And then other things that build collagen, we're talking about vitamin C builds collagen, oh, yeah. retinoids, build collagen there are a lot of things sin tc is helpful mm -hmm. for collagen but do the tca peel it's worth it all day long okay so debbie asks i'm trying to get rid of lines around my mouth i have done three layers of tca peel and also done a vi peel a few years ago just for overall refresher which peel can i use around the mouth and chin i'm familiar with sun with some well of course You'll continue on with the TCA. And yeah. if, if you only, yeah, if you only want to do peels around the lip area, um, I mean, you can you can follow around, just get our, our lip peel kit, which comes with a TCA 20. And it also comes with SynTC, a luminosity, and it comes with a one bottle. So, you know, you'll get a few, maybe three, three peels. I guess it depends on how many layers you're applying. Um, just around the mouth, nasal labial folds, oh, things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, or the other option, of course, is to just, you know, put more layers of the TCA on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. So Joe from Chicago <laughs> has a Fitzpatrick of two. A couple of questions about Supercop 2X. How long does it last after open? And mine has a strange smell to it. Is that normal? Yes. It's and perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah. They're good for at least two years so this one here was well because it's been sitting up here it was manufactured three of 21. yeah so i mean this is still good this yeah. is still good for at least another year ish and yeah. yes what happens to these coppers and it's perfectly normal so you know this one's been sitting here a little bit this used to be a bright bright blue this mm -hmm. is the seven percent ghk and it's not even like it's sitting in the light it's usually dark in this room this is a dark greenish blackish color yeah. It's, it's never even been opened. It is perfect. There is nothing at all wrong with this. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing at all wrong with this. And when this turns dark and smells funny, still very there's active. nothing at all wrong with yeah. it. Copper actually has a smell to it. And Dr. Picard puts a little bit of fragrance in there to mm -hmm. cover it up. But the fragrance, he puts it in very lightly. The fragrance doesn't last very long. When it wears off, yeah. it does kind of stink. And that's another reason. That's another good reason to put copper on at night, yeah. right before you go to bed. It does have an odor. And I have spoke to their staff there about this in the past and they said they've done studies where you know they've tested these things four or five years and they're still the copper is very very active yeah for sure yeah I, it just I, doesn't smell it doesn't good. just go bad but they no. have to give you some sort of a date you know sure. usually two years one or two years is always yeah. like a standard don't date. let the smell or color fool you it's no. still working no okay so i have uh very stubborn i have very stubborn but light sunspots that will not go away after three tca peels and four IPLs. What should I try? I, I have one of those. I have a couple yeah. spots like that. I've had everything, everything. They don't want to go anywhere. They're probably just, just so deep. But the one time that I did lighten it a bit, it was with Jesner. Yeah. And I see you're doing TCA. Now, Jesner mm -hmm. is known for its capability to lighten hyperpigmentation. It's because of the resorcinol in there. So I highly suggest, instead of just doing the TCA peels, start doing either a full series of only Jesner peels or Jesner and TCA ah, peels. there you go. I would do at least, you know, just since you've been consistent. doing TCA, at least yeah. two, three layers in Jesner. And especially if you just want to do it on that spot, you can yeah. probably do three, four layers. Sure. You can, and, and I know we say to like stop at five layers. 
you can certainly go past that as you move forward. You know, in office, they, they can go up to 10 layers. And I'm not saying to run home and do 10 layers, you, but over the course of, you know, a year and a oh, half, yeah. if you worked your way up to that, I don't think you will. But <laughs> right. you can always keep adding more layers as you go forward as your skin acclimates. But Jesner or Jesner plus TCA, I would throw a dream peel or luminosity on that too. Oh yes, dream peel. <laughs> Okay, so this comes all the way from Scotland. Ooh, uh, Lorna I'm Reynolds Scottish. is uh, light skin, Fitzpatrick of two. Is it okay to use tretinoin before starting a peel? Also, where can I find the defatting product? What is it called? Do you get gauze with the peel as well? Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, you definitely want to use uh, tretinoin or another retinoid <laughs> before peels. But now, when you say use before start okay now if you've been using it for months and your skin is acclimated you're not irritated and dry and all that kind of stuff then yeah you're good mm -hmm. if you're saying that you're just starting using tretinoin and then you want to do a peel that's just not going to work because you're going to have some acclimation time mm -hmm. with tretinoin mm -hmm. so as long as you're acclimated you're good i suggest that you stop uh, applying your tretinoin at least three to five days before you do that peel because yes. it causes extra sensitivity. So uh, gauze pads, you do get like one or two single individual sleeves yeah, of gauze. Yeah, we give you those. And we do have uh, the sleeves on our website for sale for I think maybe yeah, six Yeah, we give you a couple $7. of these. There's two pads. It's probably good for one peel that we just kind of give you. And we also have that 200 count pack. Yeah. And then it's prep A or prep B. So prep A is for the, and they come in the glass bottles like this. Mm -hmm. Prep A is for any of the hydroxy acids. And it's, you know, it's the alcohol plus a little glycolic. And Prep B has um, the alcohol, but it has some phenol in there as well. Phenol is what's used for numbing. So that bit. can be really helpful to use before a Jesner or a TCA peel. All right, this one comes from Jay in Southern California, Fitzpatrick of five. I have large pores, rolling scars, ice pick scars, and hyperpigmentation from a previous peel from a different brand before I knew prep was needed with Fade Bright. What regimen can I use now to improve my skin? So this is one of those, I have PIH, now what do I do? Yeah, um, well, Fade Bright for sure. Mm -hmm. I would say Fusion A for sure, every single night. Vitamin C of course can be very helpful and i'm assuming you're still trying to work on those ice pick yeah. scars um so maybe a low grade tca yeah you can Seven? always do milder you can always mm -hmm. do milder you could do and and you don't say what no. percentage i mean you could have used yeah. a 40 or 50 percent for all i know right and yes that does cause problems and i have seen it out there yeah. so if that's the case you know, a 13 is quite safe sure. for you. But if you use something like a 15 and you ran into these troubles, then yeah, you could use um, something like the 7 TCA or you could use the Jesner. Jesner is also really, really good. And I just want to mention again for depressed scars and things, Supercop 2X. You use this every single night, just fill in the holes and wipe the rest off and go to bed. This alone will help with depressed scars. Okay, this, this person has a couple of questions here. I am starting the two week prep prior to my TCA peel. In what order do I apply my skin care, serums, Fade Bright, Retin-A, et cetera, for AM and PM? Well, always thin to thick, mm -hmm. right? So you always start with your serums, and then your mm -hmm. creams, and then your oils. So the only serum that would always go first is an alcohol-based serum, like Fade Bright, or an acid-based serum, which also has alcohol in it, like, you know, the acid serum 15 or 30. Um, uh, and then at PM, you know, it's the same thing. But that's where you're going to put your fusion. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or during the day, you always want to end with your SPF. Some yes. people always think that SPF doesn't go on last. SPF always, always mm. goes on last because mm -hmm. it's actually a reflector. So your, your serums, your creams, your oils, then your SPF is always last because it reflects the sun away. Okay, uh, how many times per day can I apply the emu oil once I apply the peel? As needed. Yeah, you as know, you I mean, you don't want to clog your pores or anything by just coating your face with oils and ointments. Yes. But, you know, I find it's almost easier if you're feeling really, really dry to re wet your face or re wash your face, maybe. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit off, pat it dry, and then put, you know, your oil on. Or I like to mix mm -hmm. the oil and the hyaluronic acid because it's water based. Um, put that on on your moist skin and you'll feel more comfortable longer. Gotcha. 
Okay, what peels can I do in between bi-weekly or monthly TCA peels and how often? Well, you can never do peels yeah, in between no. peels and we have a post on that. What you have to do is you always have to look at the recommendations of the peel you just did and follow that. So if you did TCA, most likely you have to wait at least 30 days. So at that 30 day mark, okay, you can do another TCA peel or let's say you wanna do a mandelic peel, that's mm -hmm. okay. Your mandelic peel says you have to wait a week. So you wait a week, and at the end of that week, you can do another Mandelic, you can do another TCA, whatever you want. Just follow the rules of the last acid you applied. Don't ever try to sneak anything in between. Uh, and then his last question is, what is uh, Fitzpatrick scale? Well, Fitzpatrick is the, the colors of our skin, mm -hmm. from lightest to darkest. Right. And the reason it's important is because the well, Fitzpatrick 1 and 2, the very, very light, very low, low chance of getting like hyperpigmentation after right. peels and things like that. <clears throat> but once you hit like three, where you're getting into Asian skin, um, a Latino skin, olive colors and darker, now you run a higher risk of getting hyperpigmentation. So you need more prep. You need to prep with a melanin inhibitor like Fade Bright and retinoids, of course, hydroquinone, things like that to help turn down the melanin production mm -hmm. so you're safer when you do your peels. All right, next one comes from Christy, has dry skin in San Jose, California, Fitzpatrick of a two. I have very sensitive skin at 50. I've been using platinum for almost a year and absolutely love it. If I want to do a light peel one time a month, which I am currently not, it seems like I won't be able to use my retinols or HAs. Hi, uh, Hyaluronic acids? Uh, um, hydroxy acids. Hydroxy, oh, hello. Hydroxy acids or any product one or two weeks before and one or two weeks after. When no. does that leave me time to use the acid washes, etc.? You're doing a peel once a month. Yeah. So you do that peel and in seven to 10 days you're done. So that leaves another 20 plus days to use your normal products. Yeah. So you're good. That her second part of her question is, is um, very regimen oriented so mm -hmm. if you have a regimen that you need help with you can certainly email us at platinum or support at platinum skincare.com yep like jennifer explain you know your thinnest to thickest mm -hmm. um, and we can give you exact because this is she's got a lot here yeah fade yeah wash tone yeah fade bright you know treatments sure. eye treatments yeah 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 toner <laughs> She has a lot on there. Serums, so then creams, then oils. Christy, email us at support at yes. Platinum. And Serums, we will... then creams, then oils. That's we'll all you need you. to know. And, oh, hello. Oh, where's it? It's not. Oh, it is on this box. <laughs> <laughs> Look on every single box. There is the same thing that tells you. I have to hold it way back over my glasses on. Application layering. Mm -hmm. See at the bottom. What does that say? Toner, <laughs> serum. Oh, creams, yeah, S oils, yeah. and SPF last. Yep, that's it. It's layered. Boom, and boom, boom. And that is exactly how you and do that. And that's on every single product, too. But if you're still confused, we will absolutely help you out. Yes. Okay, so Teresa Hill is from Discovery Bay, California, Fitzpatrick of two. Her question is, though I try, I cannot avoid the sun right now. I do use a good sunblock lotion. I am tan. I am impatiently waiting for fall to start my TCA peels again. I know you are not supposed to peel tan skinned skin because Fade Bright would be using a shallower peel first be a good prep. So besides Fade Bright, would using a sh like a lighter peel a be a good prep? A milder peel. Mm -hmm. If so, which one? I mean, you could. I would suggest mostly just start using a retinoid if you're not already every single night, like 0.15 if you're just starting, 0.25. And then if you want to do a peel, yeah, you got to be careful if you have a tan yeah. What happens when you do peels is it may not come off evenly. You could have like yeah. splotchy looking skin. So yeah, maybe a lactic 50 where there's really no visible flaking or mandelic 22. Those are options. Yeah, because she's used to doing multi-layer acid peel. So she's yeah. doing Jesner um, TCA 13 followed with Dream Peel. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to definitely want to do something milder. Yep. Um, or you could potentially do even a dream peel. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that doesn't cause sure. a lot of heavy flaking. No. That just causes all over. You could do a dream peel and then to wear a hat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like wear a big, a big hat. That'll protect you. And yeah, make sure you're putting on at least SPF 50. You're saying you're tanning through it. You know, like 30 is not really going to block the sun. 40 is okay. 50 and higher is Hats, probably best. Sunglasses. And reapply, yeah. reapply. Don't just put it on one time and think you're good. 
Okay, so Richard has combination skin from Texas. When doing a chemical peel, what steps should I take before actually doing the peel? Mm -hmm. and so like cleanse, mm -hmm. prep, peel. Yep, cleanse, yeah. Wash with like a good acid cleanser is the best because we want your skin clean, so don't be using like glycerin soaps and creamy soaps and bar soaps and things like yeah. that. That doesn't really clean your skin. Yeah something that's gonna give you almost squeaky clean. Then you're gonna strip your skin. We have our Prep A or Prep B. If you don't have that, you can use 90% alcohol or higher or lower, no less than 70. Or um, the other one is uh, acetone, pure acetone, not nail polish remover. Right. Um, you could use that as well. Okay, so Teresa has oily skin. She's also from Texas. Um, can peels be used for someone who has seborrheic keratosis? Yes, it can. Um, the most popular peel to help with that is salicylic. So I would suggest probably like the salicylic 15 peel mm -hmm. that can help control that a little bit for you. And use something every single day, you know, like use the AB cleanser every single day. There's salicylic in here, mm -hmm. or you can use the AB toner or salicylic in there. I think those are really good options. And if you need like a moisturizer, you don't want to irritate anything. B complex is very soothing and healing. I've had clients that say the good. hyaluronic is good for that as well. Hyaluronic, yeah. yes. Yeah, or yeah, Mix or hyaluronic those. and vitamin there B. You go. Like, I put both combo. of these on every day. Yeah, that's a great combination. <laughs> Okay, Cindy Goodfellow has oily skin from Canada. How can I stop my skin from becoming oily under makeup? Yeah, so obviously use things meant for oily skin, mm -hmm. like, you know, again, salicylic, AB cleanser, things like that. You want to clear out your pores. And the big, big key is when you wash your face and it's you just barely pat it dry while it is still moist, you want to seal in that moisture. So grab your B Complex, which is a nice light moisturizer for problem skin. Put that on and let that soak in for a second. Put your sunblock on. The key here is if you are moisturizing your skin, it's not going to start pumping out that excess oil. What people do is they have this oily skin and they're constantly, you know, wiping toners and swiping this and that and dry, dry, dry. Yeah. Well, all you're doing is making your skin panic and go, oh my God, I'm so dry. I better kick on the oil. That's what you're doing. And if, if you constantly just hydrate it first, seal that in while it's moist, you won't get as oily. It may take a little bit and then a big key is using retinoids every night. Retinoids, vitamin A, helps to turn down the sebum production in your skin. It does not instant. It'll also tighten your pores. That's not instant either, but over the course of many months, this will happen, and that will help to control that. All right. Our next question comes from Atlanta, Georgia, Fitzpatrick of five. What percentage of peel should I use if I'm doing my private parts? Lady bits? Um, including in between <laughs> her butt and the booties and her booty cheeks. and the underarms and we have a post on this yeah. on our help we have a center great video yeah because well, is it a video it's not a video <laughs> <laughs> not a video let me demo this one <laughs> yeah well we want to use... draw the line Jenna I'm not doing it <laughs> Okay, so we have a great article. <laughs> we have a great read. article on that, though. And it yeah. says all of these Use things. things, use milder things, like <laughs> use the Lactic 50, use Fade Bright, things like that. But yes, you can do it. Um, I do know of spas that have, you know, reached out to us mm -hmm. that will do all the little parts down there. Um, um, what you need to do is make sure that you're not ever applying acid to a mucus producing area. So if that area is wet naturally or shiny, belly up your nose, let's say, for example, we don't want to put it there. We want to put it on dry areas. Right. So um, if there's any moist areas nearby, which I would venture to say there is, I would take some Vaseline or some yeah. Aquaphor or something. Nice make sure you protect those areas and then make sure to put the acid on there and you're gonna use a milder acid like the lactic or mandelic. Some spas will use stronger acids like TCA and things, but I would not just jump into that. No. I, I would be very cautious and really dependent on your skin color. I would, if you're darker skin, I would not use anything like a TCA or What about even like Jessner. triple tree body lotion? I mean, it's a daily... You could, I mean... It's got it kind could. of a high percentage of like 25 percent yeah, you know so. i mean that could help fade bright plus that to yeah. lighten areas yeah it just could get a potentially irritating yeah 
Whereas, you know, maybe the peel might be a little bit easier if it's maybe. just, you know, once, and you can only do that, you know, your body peels slowly. Yeah. So you're talking like, you know, once a month, or if you're doing the super mild ones, maybe two times a month, you know, right. once every couple weeks, maybe do a little swipe of mandelic or something like that, or lactic. Right. But lots of hydration when you're done, so you're not irritated down there. Okay, so Pam from Colorado Fitzpatrick 3, do you have a combination peel or process that's similar to the VI peel? Yes. We do. What we want to do, and this is actually stronger because these are higher percentages than mm -hmm. what's in the VI peel. So you would do your Jesner first, mm -hmm. one or two layers. Depends on how seasoned you are at doing this, you add more layers. Jesner, then TCA, and then, well, you could do either luminosity is is the milder option mm -hmm. or if you want to make this as potent as possible you would do the drain peel on top. yeah that is that combo is very great. much what is in the vip the vi peel yes. i mean basically all the same ingredients they're just putting the vitamin a on afterwards and they have these ingredients all together in their one solution but you know you can only do like one peel at a time or you're right. going to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do that now you can do that at home for way less one peel then you're going to get like six plus peels oh yeah okay and they're stronger uh colleen gray from new jersey fitzpatrick too um hello i was halfway through a retinol 30 bottle when the fusion a became available I bought the 0.25 bottle. I noticed people commenting that they are feeling a tingling when they apply Fusion A. I have applied it three times so far and haven't felt any tingling. Am I supposed to? Nope. Because it's a serum, but less oily than the retinol, I have been putting a cream moisturizer over, over it. Should nope. I stop doing that? Yeah, I, I saw that post in the Guru group today too. And I've been using this for of months now yeah and i have never felt tingling so maybe mm. they just have really sensitive skin possibly or i don't know maybe i don't know <laughs> everyone's skin <laughs> it reacts doesn't, differently it, it's not there's nothing in there to make it tingle purposefully right so just keep that in mind. So if you're not feeling it tingle you're all good i don't feel it tingle either and yes this is like we said this is like a creamy serum so this is one of your thicker serums. So you can absolutely put a cream on top of that and an oil on top of that if sure. you want. Sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, this comes all the way from Sweden, from Lada. Her, ah, uh, she's she, in our group. Yeah, she is. Uh, dry skin, dry to combination skin. Fitzpatrick of three. How and for what condition can I use the Dream Peel? What should how you know what should I prepare? Is this peel similar? getting a TC, is it similar to getting a TCA peel? How will I treat my skin after? I think it, well, obviously this can help absolutely anything that vitamin A would help. You know, if you've mm -hmm. got hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, scarring, you just want a general refreshing The uh, bonus is skin. it doesn't sting when you and apply it, it. Yeah, it doesn't sting it's when you apply serum. it. just a So, I mean, this can be used for absolutely anything. Prep is the same as with any peel. You know, we really do want you using either retinoids or acid serums. Antioxidants are great, you know, sunblock. We just want your skin to be healthy mm -hmm. when you do a peel. That's really all there is to it. You want it healthy and quickly regenerating, you know, as good skin should, like with retinoids and acids and things like that. That's what does it. Post peel, just healing products. Post peel, I loved mm -hmm. the essential healing blend. You know, an emu oil, Either one of these, and I will say like, okay, with me, this made me very, very sensitive afterwards. Yeah. My skin was Got very a little bit red of a and delayed reaction. warm and Like you I, think hmm. like on day three, you're like, oh, this is nothing. And then all of a sudden <laughs> your skin's very, like I get a sunburn flush I do look. Too. You know, I look like I went to a tanning salon I, or And something. the same thing if I put it on top of a TCR Jesner too. My face is literally warm yeah. for a couple of days. Feel sunburned. It does feel sunburned. <laughs> it does. Sunburned. And I found like that after this, when we were first testing this, I think I had it on for like four times. It was, I was very irritated. And even when I put the emo oil on, it was burning. Like yeah. everything burned me. But the essential healing blend did not burn me. Oh, that cool. was... And I'm just like, well, that's interesting because yeah. this has never burned me before. Right, right. But this is even less irritating wow. than this. So I like to just mix both of them usually, but for the Dream Peel, wow, the Essential Healing Blend was excellent to put on. 
Okay, uh, Yasmin from Tennessee, Fitzpatrick 4. Hello, my question is, I'm kind of confused on getting the TCA peel and which percentage is best for me, the 13% or the 30%. Can I use the 13% on my body but layer it just to be on the safer side or is it safe for a first time user to jump to the 30? So it sounds like she's doing a body peel. Yeah, so if you're doing a body peel, you're a Fitzpatrick four, so I see I where you're coming from. Training. You're a little bit nervous and you're gonna be putting this on your arms and legs. Yeah. You really need to prep. I would suggest, you know, you can prep your skin with triple trait body lotion to get things nice and even. And I would use the Fade Bright because you are in that category where yeah. you could run into hyperpigmentation. Yes, use this for, two to three weeks minimum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, before you do a peel. I would suggest, yeah, I would suggest the 20. Okay. Um, could you do the 13? If you were older and your skin was thinner, mm -hmm. I would suggest the 13. Where you are now, oh, we don't have anything about age. I'm assuming that your skin is, you know, normal thickness. I think you would be good with the 20, but you know, just do one layer. Yeah. That will be your very light peel. Do one layer and see how that goes. And no, you're not gonna get a lot of peeling or anything like that. Keep it 100% protected from the sun. You can even put Fade Bright on after you rinse your peel off for a day or two, mm -hmm. um, just to be on the super safe side. And I think you'll be fine. And then next month you can do two layers. And, and I like to use the Triple Treat post peel to help like one time a day, kind of like instead of the luminosity, Triple Treat goes further yeah. on the arms and legs. Yeah, you can. To help the body peel a smidge quicker. Yeah, as long as it's not burning you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as long wait as a few days burning. until you're not feeling sensitive at all, yeah. but sometimes that will help. Yep. Um, okay, so Alex has dry skin and he asked, I, let's see, I can't find your site on Facebook. Could you please send a link? So I think he's looking for our Platinum Skin Care Guru yeah, group. Yeah, Platinum Skin Care Gurus. That's our Facebook group. And it's 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 not a, it's a private group, but mm -hmm. you can see it's a public group. You just have to join to see all the posts. So you'll just, you know, you'll find, just probably type in Platinum and Guru, and then you'll see, um, you'll see us. Okay, perfect. Uh, next one comes from Janie Thorne in California. She has dry skin. I would like, like to talk to someone about your peels. I have had quite a bit of success with peels. I had a CO2 laser peel several years ago. Love the result. I don't necessarily want to go that deep in with the downtime. Uh -uh. I want, <laughs> I want hurts. to set myself up with a set of peels that I can do at home and keep my skin looking great. I am 65 and I look like I'm in my 50s and I'd like to keep it that way. Yeah. So hopefully you're already using things like retinol every single night or, you know, retinoids, tretinoin, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That's your number one. And since you look like you're 50 instead of 65, I'm going to assume you are because that's key. Yeah. Um, other than that, okay, so you want a mild peel? Yeah, she wants something mild. Mild, yeah. Yeah, Mandelic 40 is a good option. Mandelic 40 is a really good option. You could also do like a glycolic. You know, glycolic's yeah. a nice general acid. Sure. Um, yeah, Mandelic 40, glycolic 30 or 50. We've seen amazing results with uh, the weekly peels. Yeah. If they're you consistent. Just yeah. Be consistent. Yeah. Or if you didn't want a lot, you could do like a TCA 7. TCA 7 is a nice in between peel where you're not going to get a ton of flaking. Right. But you'll still get some benefits from TCA. Okay, so LaVon Thomas has oily skin from Virginia, Fitzpatrick of three. I'm mainly interested in peels for collagen and elastin production. Do only Jesners and TCA help with that, or do hydroxy acids help with that too? I think all acids help. Didn't we talk about yeah, this Yeah, we already? did. Somebody else has this very <laughs> yeah, similar yeah, question. Yeah, same question. Very yeah. similar, common question. Lots of fun TCA things happen number under the surface, one. but yes. Number one, do a TCA peel if you want to stimulate collagen and elastin. Nothing works as good as this. All the other acids, yes, they can help. Absolutely. So can vitamin C. So can all the retinoids. Um, they can all help, but TCA is your number one. And if you don't want to do a strong TCA, just like I said, do the seven TCA, two, three layers. That's going to give you more benefits. Perfect. All right, so Mimi has combination skin from Virginia, Fitzpatrick of three. Um, she's got a couple questions. First question is, what is the shelf life of TCA 13 once the bottle's been opened? Up to one year. Two years closed. All right. Number two question says, I am concerned about downtime during the peeling process. Typically, the whole process can take me 10 days before I'm presentable. 
Days three through six are very tight and wrinkly. Day seven through 10, shedding skin. Perfectly normal. <laughs> Instead of doing three to four passes of TCA 13 for a deeper peel one time a month, could I just do one pass to avoid the intense stages of peeling? Will Absolutely. I still get benefits? Can I do this light application once a week? Well, what does it say in there? Yeah, I want to say every, to me, one once to every two, two weeks. weeks, I think Once think every it one says, to two if you're doing one layer. If you're doing one layer. You have yeah. to read your skin and see if you're, how your skin's reacting. Yeah, because that, that could be fine for the first month, and yeah. then the next month, all of a sudden, your skin's irritated and red. Yeah. So you could, could try, mm -hmm. like once every two weeks, I would try and see how that goes. And if, you know, follow your skin. If you start to get irritated, then you need to cut back again. All or right. go to the seven. Again, go yeah. to the seven. The yeah. seven is a great is. one to do. And you won't get as much flaking. All right, this one's coming all the way from Russia, from Sonia. She has normal skin, Fitzpatrick of five. She says, I've been using tretinoin on my old stretch marks for almost three months now, and I'm planning to continue using it until October before I have my first chemical peel. I plan on starting with TCA20 because I'll be using it for my arms and stomach, but I am a little scared because I don't know what to expect, and I also do not want to get burned. Though I have watched a lot of videos on how to apply a TCA peel process involved in pre and post treatment. I have also watched your videos and I have learned a lot about them too. Hoping to do great work when I do it myself, but my question is, considering the fact that I am planning to use tretinoin for six months before the peel, would I, would I get good results after the first peel? You're gonna take many peels on stretch marks. Yeah, for sure. And make sure that you're using Fade Bright as a pretreatment. Yeah, Fitzpatrick with dark skin. 5, you most definitely need to be using Fade Bright. Or yeah. If you already have something else with hydroquinone or alpha arabutin, you need to be using that. Yes, the mm -hmm. tretinoin is going to help as well. And that's, that's good. Tretinoin is very beneficial for, you know, scars and things like that. I think... You know, I think you are going to see something. I know a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I'm just, just searching the internet. You oh, can yeah. see, well, I did a peel on my stretch marks. And mm -hmm. generally, every time you do a peel, you can see some improvement. Yeah. You can. And then it's just, but you have to just keep building on that. And the easiest way to see, of course, is taking photos. Because after a while, you think you remember what it looked like, and you're not really accurate. Yeah, so take you your photos, and, and mm -hmm. then you're going to do one peel once a month. And you're going to do that six to eight times. It's not going to be something that's immediate. And if you have stretch marks, I would also suggest Supercop 2X. Yeah. These are really, really good. This, I mean, even just on its own, you could start using this right now mm -hmm. with your tretinoin because this second generation can go on with acids. Mm -hmm. So you can put this on right with your tretinoin um, or maybe this one night, tretinoin the next night, whatever you want to do. This will help with your stretch marks too. It helps to break down damaged normal, right. well, unnormal tissues and helps to stimulate new normal tissues. We always suggest this with um, scar treatments. I just counseled a, a customer on the phone the other day who was terrified to do the peels. So we decided on Serum 30 and Supercop 2X. Supercop 2X. Yeah. Yes. That's so we'll perfect. See. Yep. That is so good to do on the body. Like if you are scared to do the peels. And yes. that's okay. Um, Catherine has dry skin from Georgia. I did not receive instructions with my purchase of Jesner's. Huh. I know I can watch a video, but I prefer written instructions. Are they anywhere on your site to print these off? Now, just double check this. Sometimes people get this and they don't, they just think, well, where's the direction booklet? They don't open it's it inside. up and see the booklets inside. Okay, so just in case you haven't opened it, I just talked to somebody on the phone the other day. They're like, oh, it was inside. Here it is, <laughs> it's inside. So if it's not there, for we do some have a reason, link on the website. we do have a link on the bottom. It says Peel Directions. Click that, and this book is basically there. Mm -hmm. Every single page, it looks just like the book. You can print it out if you like. And if you lose your Perfect. booklet, it's there. All right, next question says Anytime I use a chemical peel, my skin is a different color. Hmm. Make sure that you're pre treating, I guess. Or are they you peeling mean... on tan skin, maybe? Yeah, yeah, like, what do you mean a different color? Not, not like purple or green. I mean, what, we're turning brown or pink? That's not an in-depth enough question for me to answer. Why don't you email um, support and give us a little bit more information? Because that would not be normal, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't know what chemical peel you applied. Mm -hmm. Was it a, you know, a TCA-50 and that caused your skin to turn colors? 
So email us and let us know what you're talking about, okay? Because, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So moving along, this next one comes from France, from Nathalie uh, Fitzpatrick of two. Hello, Jennifer. This uh, question is for a friend. She did peels, glycolic, and had brownish spots and red spots that showed up after three peels. I advised her to buy from you high-octane stem cells and hyaluronic serum, mandelic peel, but it was sold out, which, hmm, I don't know. We haven't been sold out for a while on that, but... Um, so she bought Dream Peel and Fade Bright. She bought Dream Peel and Fade Bright. Um, let's see. So she's got brown and any? red oh. marks. I got, yeah, go ahead. I go ahead. Sneak she's got to do her, do her uh, driving around the high-low. All right. So brownish red spots. All I can think of here is that this is possibly... Um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and if that's the case generally that doesn't happen with glycolic peels and I don't know was this our glycolic peel was this somebody else's glycolic peel was this a 70% glycolic peel it's very tough to tell why glycolic would cause these dark marks did they go into the sun afterwards with no sun protection there's a lot of reasons that things can happen or go bad so um Fade Bright's gonna help. You did mention the vitamin C, that can very much help. Dream Peel could potentially help a little bit because obviously we're gonna just do another peel. We're gonna turn over more skin. That's a one time a month peel. And you got the Retinol 20. So that's, you know, that's just been recently um, turned into our Retinol or our Fusion A 0.15 and 0.25. So I suggest that every single night that will help as well. And just, you know, try to have them not use that particular glycolic peel anymore. Have them use either something milder or better for pigmentation like the Mandelic 22, Mandelic 40, maybe a lactic peel. Let's not go to something very strong. Um, okay, so next is Kay, and she says that she has bad melasma on her neck and face. I use retinol 1%, so I don't know if that's tretinoin 0.1%, retinol 1% maybe um, says it's not made a difference any advice on peels I'm so confused so if you have melasma obviously melasma is hormonally based pigmentation problems I have it as well you need to use things like fade bright every single day you need to use things like retinoids every single night I know you said that you're using one you just can't stop add on a melanin inhibitor consider things like chemical peels I would suggest either the Mandelic 40 if you want to do a series of weekly peels, or if you want to do a stronger peel, like once a month, Jesner is very, very beneficial for hyperpigmentation in the skin. So try that. And keep in mind that melasma is something you're gonna be fighting for ever. It's never gonna go away. It only gets worse as you get older. SPF 50, bare minimum, every single day, and reapply it if you're outside buy yourself a nice big hat protect yourself out in the sun because even one afternoon out in the sun just trying to get a little bit of sun you're gonna get stuck right again so just never give the sun an opportunity to hit your face so next i think this is the last oh no there's one more um is the egf stronger in the regenerate or the egf in the doctor potions they're the same so it doesn't matter which one you choose you're getting this either single all by itself or you're buying one of the potions where you put two together or you put four together. It's still the same base solution. So you're good either way. All right, let's see what time we got and how many do we have? Oh, not too much more. All right, question regarding putting on healing ointments. Immediately after applying a peel, I had a laser treatment it was quite uncomfortable. I asked the esthetician about taking ibuprofen, applying ointments. She said the best thing to do was embrace the inflammation because that helps to induce collagen. Thoughts and advice. Yeah, that's true. You know, when you're getting heat, a lot of big heat uh, treatments like that, like the lasers and all that kind of stuff, that is true. They will normally tell you not to put anything on at least for a few hours or that first day. So, you know, the same thing can happen, um, we're done with this one. Okay. The same thing can happen with peels. You know, so if you're not in a category of skin type where you're not worried about getting PIH, you could potentially, 
you know, not put something on and not soothe it and let it be irritated. But, you know, for the most part, I, I do generally suggest to put something, you know, calming on and soothing and healing. It's not going to hurt anything. And you still are going to have that inflammation under there. Like, like I was saying earlier, I put the dream peel on. My face was warm for days. You know, that's, that doesn't matter what I put on. I put tons and tons of this on and still had that inflammation. So it's going to do what it's going to do, whether you put that on or not. Okay, I'm back. What's next? Okay, <laughs> all done. It was hot. <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unloaded that truck and we're good. Okay, next question. Um, this customer's looking for Dermafix. Oh, and unfortunately, yeah. that's been discontinued. Yeah. We don't have that one. It's just, you know what? It wasn't a humongous seller. I think people are not coming to us necessarily for too many body products. They yeah. love, 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 love this. Yeah. Of course, it's an acid serum. It's not like a... Right. A, a niche type thing. So yeah, we had to get rid of that. I'm so sorry. Use this one if you're looking for a great lotion. Okay. Next question comes from Anaya. She's from Somerville Fitzpatrick of five. She says, so I did a chemical peel. I'm still peeling my whole chin. I already peeled off. My skin got very dark. I'm really trying not to panic. What does this mean? Well, we don't know what peel you did. Was it one of our peels? Did you do a TCA 50? Did you do a glycolic 30? Sounds like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Did you pre-treat? You have a dark skin, right, yeah. Did you pre-treat with a melanin inhibitor like She doesn't right. say what percent, we don't know. Those are all things that will help to prevent this. Yeah. You know, uh, so with anybody with darker skin, we always recommend pre-treating for a bare minimum two to three Please, weeks, two weeks and always using the milder percentage. We don't know what acid or what percent. Mm -mm. So that means if you're looking at the TCAs, you know, you're only doing maybe a 13, not a 20, not a 30, things like that. So right. you can email help if you want to give us some more information. Okay, we've got about three more left. Um, Claudia has oily skin from Florida, Fitzpatrick 4. She says, I do stronger for me TCA peels over the Florida winter, but I was wondering how to continue the collagen building during the Florida summer. Can I do a much lower strength TCA, perhaps mm -hmm. a 7% during the summer to continue building collagen? Yes. Yeah, Claudia yes. knows what's up. She knows. Absolutely. Yeah, use the 7% and then make yeah. sure you put your retinoids on at night because these also stimulate collagen. Make sure you're putting your vitamin C on during the day. That also stimulates collagen. Read the page and you'll see like the AAP is really good for collagen mm -hmm. and skin lightening and all that kind of stuff. All right, Constance has dry skin from Blacksburg, Virginia. Oops, sorry, <laughs> I'm all frazzled. It was really hot that outside. It was hot out there. <laughs> it's humid here in Michigan. Um, okay, I have used TCA Peel 30 on my legs. Over two weeks ago. On my legs ago. over two weeks ago. They are now, they have now just completed peeling. That was I fast. I have age spots on my legs. Should I wait one month before peeling and reapplying. Yes, you have yeah. to wait at least 30 days. You may not actually be done peeling. Yeah. Your skin may get dry again next week and peel some more. Usually the body takes up to 30 days to finish that process. Mm -hmm. So just because you feel smooth right now, it might feel rough again, you know, in and another day. And she can day. just spot treat just the age spots, like moving yeah. forward if she doesn't want to do the whole leg, you know? Yeah, you can do that with the Jesner and a Q-tip or TCA and a Q-tip. Okay, so the last question comes from Abby. She has normal skin from Los Angeles, Fitzpatrick of four. How to use the Dream Peel after a Jesner TCA? Can it be used two to three days to improve pigmentation and speed flaking? Okay, so if you do the TCA peel and you apply, you rinse all that off and you apply Jesner, or <laughs> you apply Dream Peel, mm -hmm. that's it. This goes on one time only. I don't yeah. want you to confuse that with luminosity yeah. luminosity is much 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 milder and this is something that after you rinse this off you apply this and then you can apply it again the next night and again the next night yeah. until your skin starts peeling and then you put it away so if you're using luminosity yes you can apply it for a couple nights in a row if you're using dream peel one time only yeah that's it that's it just once oh we should check and see if there's any other oh, questions wait, wait, on there wait hold on no, that's the previous one. Oh, that's the no, previous one. You're good. Okay, okay. Just if we have any on here. Okay, let's see. I'm going to scroll down that right here. Number. Let's see if we have any. Okay, let's, let's see. see. Which fusion A? Using. She's using retinol or ret point retin one. A. Uh, point one. I want to start with retinol. Yeah, okay. If you're using like a point one percentage or something, start with our point 0.15. Mm -hmm. Start two nights, three nights maybe. And on another night as you go, you may get some dryness. And as that 
you know, subsides, then you can just add it on more nights in a row. So yeah, you're, you're good. Just move right into this one. We don't have it any milder. Right. Hey, is that it? That's, That's it. the only question. <laughs> That's the only one I can see. So we're good. So that is it. We covered everything in a literally and exactly an hour. Perfect. So we will be back again, probably in about another month or so to answer more questions. So if you have any time you have more questions, go ahead and post them at Peel University or of course, Platinum Skincare Gurus. Come in, join the group if you're not in the group. Well, you have to be in the group if you're watching this, unless yes. you're catching this later on Facebook or something like that. You can email to support at platinumskincare.com as well. And then call us Monday through Friday from nine to 4.30 Eastern at 1-800-917-3155. Awesome. So wonderful. Thanks for joining us today. You guys have a great day. See you soon. Bye. Bye.